Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. There have been multiple outlets reporting in the last couple days that a major breakthrough in quantum computing has occurred. You have USC News announcing that following a recent upgrade, the USC Lockheed Martin Quantum Computing Center based at the USC Information Sciences Institute is now the leader in quantum processing capacity. We're talking about the D-Wave here that we've talked about on this channel before. And again, we've been tracking the company D-Wave as well as its connection to Google and NASA and Lockheed Martin. Martin as well. These are all companies that have invested in the D-Wave. It says the QCC hosts one of two D-Wave systems that currently operate outside of D-Wave's headquarters. The other, owned by Google, is hosted at NASA's Ames Research Center. A third is being installed at Los Alamos National Laboratory. So here you have all these nodes being created across the country here of these quantum computers, the D-Wave. The register .co.uk reported Google tests its own quantum computer both qubits of it. And this article actually goes into some of the technicalities of the quantum computer and some of its breakthroughs. And then you have the International Business Times. This one was really interesting. Google boasts quantum computing breakthrough with first display of real world use. Scientists team up with Google to demonstrate one of the first real world uses for quantum computers. And it's a really interesting article. It says here, quote, US and UK scientists have teamed up with Google to successfully demonstrate the first ever completely scalable quantum simulation of a chemical reaction, showing a real world use for quantum computers, which could revolutionize multiple areas of research into medicine and materials. Researchers from Google, Harvard University, Lawrence Berkeley National Labs, Tufts University, UC Santa Barbara, and University College London have successfully managed to use a quantum computer to simulate a hydrogen molecule, which would be the first step towards simulating entire chemical systems. And then later on, it says, quote, it is thought that quantum computers will be the most useful in replicating and simulating reality, particularly modeling chemical reactions in order to predict reaction rates, which will greatly speed up how medicines, solar cells, batteries, materials, industrial catalysts, and flexible electronics are designed. And it goes on to explain the quantum computer, how it operates. And we've talked about this it doesn't just operate between one and zero, it operates as one or zero. And so it covers multiple possibilities much faster. And the article here has an interesting section. It's called Creating the Quantum Version of a Neural Network. Neural networks are large networks of artificially intelligent classical computers that are trained using computer algorithms to solve complex problems in a similar way to the human central nervous system, whereby different layers examine different parts of the problem and combine to produce an answer. The researchers decided to create a quantum version of a neural network using an approach known as Variation Quantum Eigensolver. VQE, whereby instead of programming each computer in traditional bits, you have a single binary value of 0 or 1. The computers are trained to model quantum data using quantum bits or qubits that can be in superposition so each qubit can have the value of 1 and 0 at the same time. And this is what we just mentioned. And to wrap up this article, Ray Babush, who is a Google quantum software engineer, stated in the article, quote, Though many theoretical and experimental challenges lay ahead, a quantum-enabled paradigm shift from qualitative descriptive chemistry simulations to quantitative predictive chemistry simulations could modernize the field so dramatically that the examples imaginable today are just the tip of the iceberg. So huge leaps made here in the world of quantum computing, and it is going to affect us. New scientists reported error fix for long-lived qubits brings quantum computers nearer. And I'll leave links to all these websites that you guys can check out. But I want to connect these stories with a couple other stories that have been out recently to really give you the bigger picture, a fuller picture of what's going on. Now, it's been recently reported that they've identified and mapped nearly 100 new regions in the human brain. And basically they're saying because of the scans now, they're able to get into layers and nuances of the brain that they previously forgot about or didn't understand completely. But here you have it. Now they have more of the brain mapped. And this is part of the brain initiative. And, you know, they have to provide progress. So here you go. Here's the progress. It's all kind of coming to the surface all at once, it seems. In the last several years, they have pushed it to this point where they have new discoveries of the brain. And why is that story related at all to the quantum computer? Well, because, again, the quantum computer, they're trying to create neural networks. Well, what's the best way to create neural networks? 
plug in the real brain, right? Because the simulations can happen, the quantum computer can simulate a human brain now, or, you know, that's theoretical, but essentially that's what they're going for, because then there will be a virtual version of your brain as far as data is concerned of what molecules, what chemicals, and whatever make up the actual physical brain, that data could be stored in the quantum computer. So that's why the stories of the brain and the mapping of it coming out in conjunction with these quantum computers is not an accident. Now, the other reason why it's interesting that Google is part of this is because Google literally wants to get rid of passwords. They want everything to be identified biometrically, and this is no secret. Well, Google wants to get rid of passwords. Instead of using typical methods for accessing your email or accounts, typical meaning typing in a password, Google Glass now wants to move into the future by using biometrics, including fingerprints and eye scans. Google has filed a patent for head-mounted displays that could scan a wearer's fingerprints, eyeballs, veins, and voice pattern, then use the data to access a website on a computer or a mobile device. Now, all this talk about biometrics is in conjunction to, and we've mentioned this before, the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. They want to have everybody biometrically identified by the year 2030. That's less than 14 years away now. So obviously, it looks like they're starting the implementation of these technologies. First, the breakthroughs publicly, like, yeah, you know, we got the quantum computer. We got breakthroughs in brain mapping. We got breakthroughs in the technology to connect the brain to the computer. And there you have it. We have the beginning of mapping the brain and in connection with that, all our biology being tapped into the grid system. And so this is becoming more and more invasive as things develop. And that's the greater point here. You know, it's not doom and gloom. It's just that, hey, you know, things are changing rapidly and they seem to be moving towards a direction that has biblical proportions or biblical implications. And it's because some of the crazy technology that is developing and assisting in human endeavor here. And at no other point of recorded history or known history have we really had this power, so to speak, societally. Now, I think there have been, obviously, antediluvian technology, I think, was pretty advanced. I think there were certain things going on before our time and things we don't know about. But in terms of socially, publicly, this is a huge deal. Major changes are going down, what they call the fourth industrial revolution. It's here. They've been talking about it. And we haven't even touched on too much of the space angle of this in terms of space politics, mining space, tours to space, you know, all the stuff, the discoveries happening in deep space with exoplanets and then all the, you know, pockets of oxygen. There's They're discovering all kinds of stuff, right? All of a sudden, the acceleration of quote unquote discoveries has increased. And why? Is it just for funding or are they really starting to prepare the masses for radical change in terms of a paradigm shift of the people of the earth seeing the world differently because they will be fed something that might be the great deception. So keep an eye out, guys. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. We are entering an era where the physical body is becoming obsolete. They are going to start changing genetically, enhancing things, connecting things into machines. It's all happening, folks. So expect to see all the things that we've been talking about, all the things that have been written about the next few decades start to come to pass with stories and stuff that are out there, but then obviously on the street, you know, you'll start seeing some of these changes. And so now more than ever, it becomes super important that you're equipped and you're ready to share the gospel. And, you know, because this is going to be a battle, you know, up until whenever the rapture happens or whatever, I don't think we're going to be out of here before we see the Antichrist or anything like that. But we're not waiting for the Antichrist to appear necessarily, you know, at least I'm not, but I'm prepared for it. And I'm studying the scriptures daily, I think that's what our job is to inform the church that will listen in those times to heed to the warnings. And so that's what this is. It's a warning. It's not doom and gloom. It's not fear. It's simply where we're at. And again, I didn't make up these stories. These stories are out there. It's happening in the real world, in real life. And if you think this is all hunky-dory, let's keep pushing forward to 
your myopic utopia, then so be it. But from my perspective, I see all this as basically the beginning of the complete enslavement of mankind via technology and ultimately fulfilling biblical prophecy that pertain to the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, which will trigger all kinds of prophecies that we read about in the book of Revelation. So those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless.